We're about 30% through this new Boston Bruins season, and the surprises have far outweighed the disappointments so far. We're going to do a season check-in and talk about those ups and downs, as well as take a look at what is to come and what the outlook is for this team on a brand new episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins Podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to beat. Today is Tuesday, December 5th, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. The Bruins are off until Thursday when they will uh, be playing the Buffalo Sabres. And today they have an optional practice and then we'll be visiting uh, some hospitals for the holiday season, which is always a great thing. Now, on today's podcast, we're going to discuss some surprises, some disappointments so far for the Boston Bruins. But overall, let's just say where they are in the standings is a surprise. All right. They're 17, four and three. Through uh, 24 games, they have 14 wins in regulation, which is second highest in the NHL. Uh, Only the Rangers and the Canucks have more. Their goal differential is tied for third. And they have won three in a row, six, three, and one over their last 10. Overall, in the post-Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci eras, things could not be off to a better start for the Boston Bruins. And, you know, you can't really say that David Pasternak leading the way with, what is it, 36 points is a surprise for the Bruins. What we're talking about today is players who have stepped up beyond their expectations. You could say that is true of Charlie Coyle, who at nine goals and 11 assists for 20 points, through 24 games, is on pace for a career season. Now, is that a surprise based on the fact that his ice time is up and that he is being relied upon as a top six center? Well, no, with opportunity comes, yeah, the chance to excel that doesn't necessarily always translate into actual production but right now he is on pace for 31 goals and 38 assists which would give him a total of uh 69 points which would far eclipse his previous career high of 56 points set in 2016 2017 when he was with the minnesota wild pavel zaka as well he has stepped up huge Now, these aren't necessarily, Zaka isn't as big of a surprise as Coyle. We know Zaka already excelled last season, and he's playing largely alongside David Pasternak. But the fact that those two have stepped in so well for the Bruins um, is a huge reason why they have been so good. Now, the real surprise has been the contributions from the younger centers. John Beecher and Matt Patra have impressed since day one and have really excelled in their respective deployments. John Beecher mostly as a fourth line center. He's got four goals in 23 games. Patra with five goals, six assists for 11 points in 24 games. The question is going to be for the Bruins whether they think they can rely as heavily on those two as things get tougher down the stretch and especially in the playoffs. But for now, those two guys have certainly 
uh, been a surprise. I, I didn't expect Matt Patra to make the NHL team, much less get 11 points through his first 24 games. I fully expected the Bruins to give the fourth line role to a more established guy like a Patrick Brown, who they did have there for a bit. Uh, but the fact that they have stuck with this youth movement is uh, certainly been very encouraging and it's paid off so far. You can't deny the results. So those are the big surprises for me, I think. Just how good the center core has been for the Bruins. I When was it? Back in the summer, I think I ranked where the Bruins centers fell among Eastern Conference opponents. And it was way down there uh, alongside, what, Columbus, Philadelphia, in terms of the depth down the middle and how the Bruins measured up. Look, Charlie Coyle had an opportunity to be a top six center back when David Krejci went to Czechia for that season, and it didn't quite pan out. It seemed as though he was better suited for a third-line role. And you can argue that that's what he has with Trent Frederick and James Van Riemsdyk as his line mates, with Matt Patra currently centering Danton Heinen and Brad Marchand. But you can't deny the results. So far, Bruins, Zaka, Coyle are top five on the team in scoring, on pace for career seasons, and uh, it's great to see. Now, in terms of other surprises, you can't not give James Van Riemsdyk some props. Yes, he's slowed down a bit, but he's got 16 points in 23 games so far for the Bruins. He's been a force on the power play with three goals with the man advantage. And at $1 million, he has been tremendous value. The other guy who's bringing tremendous value is Danton Heinen. He's got eight points through 16 games. He had that lengthy PTO, missed the first eight games of the season because he didn't have a contract. And he came in, started off a bit slow, but he has been so good for this team as of late and making good on the opportunity that he has right now playing in the top six. So in terms of surprises, I mean, we all know what Danton Heinen could do, what he was away from the puck, what he's able to do with the puck. He and James Van Reems like certainly have been among the surprises for this team. They were kind of low risk, potentially mid ish reward signings and uh, they've stepped up and been big parts of this team's success to date. Now that's not to say everything is perfect for the Bruins. There have been some disappointments and we'll discuss those here as the podcast continues. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract interview and hire all in one place. If you hate waiting, Indeed's U.S. data shows that over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resumes match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. With the instant match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions do apply. Cost per application pricing is not available for everyone. But if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on today to get started. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. When we are talking about... Disappointment so far for the Boston Bruins. 
I begin with uh, with Jake DeBrusque. He only has four goals and six assists through 23 games. And I was expecting a lot more for him, <clears throat> seeing as though he's in a contract year and is looking to show the Bruins that he is indeed a core member of the team and that he deserves a long-term big money deal. Yes, he's turned things on. Yes, he's second in the team in five-on-five five, uh, scoring chances. He's third on the team in five-on-five five, uh, shot attempts. And he's not getting the same power play deployment that he used to with James Van Riemsdyk being on the top unit. He's come on a little bit lately, although he only has, I believe, one goal in his last five games. He's currently on pace for 14 goals and 21 assists, which is far off what I was hoping from him, which was a push for 25 or 30 goals even. Last year, he had 27 in 64 games. We all know his big resurgence following um, a tough start in 21-22 and a public trade request, he bounced back because he was playing with Patrice Bergeron and uh, Brad Marchand. So that's obviously plum deployment. This year, he's bounced around a little bit. He's currently skating with Pavel Zaka and David Pasternak on his more natural left wing position. Keep in mind, he had been shifted over to the right wing, playing with Bergeron and Marchand. So we'll see if that is able to get him going here a little bit. I, I know that he is a streaky player that once he gets on a roll, he can really start motoring and, uh, you know, start getting the puck in the net. He only had one shot in the win over Columbus. He did have four shots on goal in the win over Toronto with an assist. So I'd really like to see a bit more from Jake DeBrusque. Now, Hampus Lindholm has been a bit of a disappointment as well. Uh, not building off that kind of Norris conversation worthy season last year where he had 10 goals, 43 assists for 53 points, which smashed his previous career high of 34. Maybe that was a bit of an anomaly. He was a plus 49 last year as well. He's averaging more ice time this year but only one goal, five assists to his credit. Three of those points have come on the power play. Not as effective overall as he was last season. And Hampus Lindholm, for me, is indeed a bit of a disappointment. But again, there's still time to turn it around. I talked about both of those guys a couple weeks ago and how you know the outlook wasn't terrible. Um, but we'd like to see them pick it up here in the coming games. Another disappointment for me is Morgan Geeky. He's been relegated to the third or sorry, the fourth line in recent games. And, you know, he signed with the Bruins because he was going to get a greater opportunity than he had in Seattle. And to be fair, he was injured a bit. He's only got one point over his last four games, and he's scoring at a diminished rate compared to last season, where he averaged 0 .1, 0 0.41 points per game, 9 goals, 19 assists in 69 games, so far through 18 games with the Bruins, 2 goals, 4 assists for 6 points, on pace for 27, a 0 0.33 points per game. Uh, rate and that's with almost three and a half no more than three and a half minutes more ice time with the Bruins than he got with the the Kraken so not quite taking advantage of the opportunity that has been presented to him again he's been shifted around the lineup it was expected that he'd be the third line center Patra Beecher took those uh, roles from him. And currently, like I mentioned, he's fourth line right wing. 
at the moment. So not really what was expected of him. Uh, um, and I'm sure personally as well, not really what he was hoping for to achieve in black and gold, but hopefully he'll continue to find his way. He is on a two year deal worth 2 million still plenty of time to figure it out. And, you know, I've talked in the past about how it takes players time to adjust to a new city, new teammates, new systems, and being injured certainly doesn't help either. So hopefully he is able to find his way. Of course, I need to mention Milan Lucic being an incredible disappointment, only playing four games before getting injured. And then, of course, he was arrested and is facing a court date for a domestic uh, violence incident. Uh, not what we hoped for in terms of the reunion with the Bruins. And, of course, the main thing is that everybody involved in the situation, uh, the Lucic family, um, are okay and being taken care of and that he gets the help that he needs as well so that this never happens again. But huge disappointment there. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's not really much more to say about that. So, What's the outlook for this Boston Bruins team? We'll assess that here in a moment as the podcast continues. If you're looking for last-minute great deals on holiday presents, look no further than Game Time. It's a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and a best price guarantee, Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. With that best price guarantee, they will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. You can also get a view from your seat so you know exactly what you're getting, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and you co use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. But create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. After 24 games, the Bruins are first in the Atlantic Division and are tied for first in the Eastern Conference in terms of points with the New York Rangers, although the Rangers have played one fewer game. So they have a better point percentage. Is this Bruins team a legit contender in the Eastern Conference? If you look at the underlying numbers, there perhaps is some room for skepticism. Uh, they are a 20th ranked team when it comes to shot attempts at 5-on-5. Five five. They're giving up more than they are generating at a rate of 48.73. Shots, they're being outshot at 5-on-5 five five as well. Uh, but they are getting some more scoring chances than the opposition at 5-on-5, five five, as well as more high-danger chances than the opposition. So you can look at it as though perhaps they're giving up more attempts and shots, but in terms of quality chances and actual scoring chances, they are generating more than the opposition. One of the big reasons why they are succeeding, of course, is the goaltending. At 5-on-5, five five, they have a save percentage of 93.79, which is second only to the Vegas Golden Knights. So perhaps they're getting a bit of puck luck. If you look at their shooting percentage and save percentage added together, it equals 103.1 which is second only to Vancouver, who's at 104. You would expect that to come down to earth a bit, and that happened during their recent three-game losing streak. But what's working for the Bruins is that two-headed monster in net, and it's rare that both would be slumping at the same time. The Bruins have largely stuck to this goalie rotation, if one guy were to uh, 
regress a bit and struggle for a bit of time, ideally the other guy would step up and take a few starts while the other guy figures it out. If both were to suddenly lose it at the same time for an extended period of time, that's where the Bruins would uh, would really be in trouble without those goalies to buffer their deficiencies at 5-on-5 five five in terms of shots and shot attempts. They are giving up some odd man rushes. They are giving up last-minute goals. Clearly, they need to work on clearing the puck, uh, on defending against the empty net situation, the 6 and 5 situations, and locking things down because we know as the season goes on and into the playoffs. I mean, we saw it last year, those collapses against um, against Florida, inability to hold leads. That's something the Bruins really need to tighten up. Is this team a Stanley Cup contender? I mean, the Atlantic is looking pretty mid at the moment, as I've said in recent games. The Bruins, Panthers, Red Wings, and Lightning are the top four right now. Actually, the Maple Leafs are in there as well, but again, they only have five regulation wins, which is fewer than last place Ottawa, fewer than the Buffalo Sabres are in seventh place, and tied with the Montreal Canadiens. So there's reason to doubt the Maple Leafs there. Um, Overall, sure, once you get into the playoffs, you never know what is going to happen. The Bruins... Defense, goaltending, penalty killing are all strengths. At the moment, they are third in the NHL, allowing only 2.46 goals per game. Their penalty kill is second. As long as they can um, continue to play strong defensively, continue to kill those penalties, continue to get strong goaltending, then they're going to have a chance to win every single night. And, um, I mean, what more could you expect from this team after losing so many players in the offseason and in what was supposed to be a transition year? And, again, those fill-ins like James Van Riemsdyk, Danton Heinen have really stepped up. Hopefully they get more from Jake DeBrusque, Morgan Geeky uh, to compensate for if some other guys slowed down here. But, overall, I'm so pumped about this team. They're very fun to watch these days and I'm thankful for each and every one of you who makes locked on Bruins part of your day. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Maybe I'll open up the mailbag. So if you have any questions, please do pop them in the comments on YouTube, send them to me on social media at locked NHL Bruins or at Ian C McLaren. And we'll answer all your questions about this team here on tomorrow's episode of locked on Boston Bruins part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.